um okay let's start hey there everyone welcome back to another video today we'll be looking at igcsc ict 0417 chapter 2 input and output devices so now basically i'm trying to create a series where i cover every chapter from chapter 1 to chapter 21 so this is our second episode so without any further ado let's get started so we have our key objectives so basically we want to know the characteristics uses advantages and disadvantages of input device oops yeah input devices direct data entry devices and output devices so first of all input device an input device is hardware that allows a user to interact with the computer and also allows the computer to collect data input device as the name suggests basically you are a user and you're inputting data or you're entering data into the computer so that you can interact with the computer and that computer itself can store the data that you have entered now the following table that they have given here shows input devices their users advantages and disadvantages and we'll quickly go through them because they are a lot like a lot a lot so a keyboard oops yeah sorry so a keyboard we all know about keyboard keyboards keyboards are used to enter data manually into a computer typing in commands to a computer such as print screen or control p and so on um yeah so advantages is that well-known method everyone knows how to use the keyboard it's an easy method of entering data into a computer easier to carry out verification checks on data entered yeah disadvantages is difficult for people to use for people with uh certain physical disabilities for example if you have uh if you if you have a broken finger then it can be really difficult for you to type right type in right then it can be slow entry method compared to direct data entry can lead to ailments such as rsi rsi stands for repetitive strain injury which you will look at further in other chapters um i think it's chapter five or so so yeah then we have numeric keypads um i think it will be really helpful if i show you an image as we move ahead because i think that will really help you visualize and remember so a numeric keypad so this is what it looks like Eric keypad okay just a second so yeah this is what it looks like okay this is a numeric keypad now this numeric keypad is used in places like atms to enter the pin to obtain your money at pos or, or point of sale terminals in case the barcode on an item fails to scan properly so you notice that when you go to supermarkets and they're trying to scan your the the thing that you want to buy and it's not working then they look at the barcode and then they are manually entering the numbers so they do this using the numeric keypad when using chip and pin devices to make a card payment when you enter your pin number you use a numeric keypad advantages it's faster input method than a standard keyboard when entering numeric data see when you have a keyboard you have all of them in a horizontal way which is really weird to type if you want to type in numbers really quick so use numeric keypad instead of keyboard easy to use input devices since it involves very few keys disadvantages Keys can be small, making input difficult for some people. Order of numbers on keypad is often not intuitive because it's one, two, three, then on top you go a line, then it becomes four, five, six, and all that. Like over here. So one, two, three, then. So this is not really intuitive, right? So that is that. Now we'll move into pointing devices. Mouse, okay? We all know the mouse. It controls the position of an on screen pointer to allow selection, open, close, files, and all and so on now you see i am using a mouse so now i can move my this cursor i can click i can select and i can do all that and just i mean we all know mouse but yeah this is what a mouse looks like uh then advantages it's a faster method to choose on-screen options so i can choose on-screen options so they're clicking it compared to a keyboard uh, requires a small amount of desk space i can just i need really small space to be type uh, moving my mouse and all disadvantage is difficult for some people to, to oh sorry difficult for to use by people with certain disabilities can lead to rsi repetitive strain injury 
some surfaces don't work well with mechanical mice mouse slips on the surface okay then we have touchpad so this is what touchpad looks like uh, there we go yeah so on your laptop you have your touchpad right um it's similar to a mouse but a flat panel below the keyboard on a laptop computer same advantages as a mouse because it's integrated in your laptop it is already there in your laptop you don't need to go around carrying a mouse with you disadvantages not everyone finds touchpad easy to control and certain actions can be difficult such as drag and drop now it's true i prefer mouse over touchpad as well because using a touchpad really restricts my movement but using a mouse i can easily have free movement and all then we move on to pointing device trackable now trackable looks like this trackable there we go now this is what a trackable looks like so you just move the ball on top and then this mouse thing stays at one place now, some of them come with both a trackable and a mouse but those are different cases just let's just look at these ones okay so Used in control rooms where desk space is at a premium and has more accurate control than a mouse. So I've I don't know if you have ever gone on a ship before, but ships usually use trackable instead of mouse. Then used in luxury cars to select functions such as operating the GPS, allowing use of smartphone and so on. Advantages: more accurate positioning of point on screen than a mouse. Yes, more robust, doesn't need a lot of space to function properly, just stationed at one place and you move the ball on top requires less space yes less prone uh than a mouse at causing rsi yes mouse can because you are con uh, continuously clicking and moving your wrist it can cause rsi but with a ball not not really then however with so many advantages it causes this to be expensive and requires some training to use because the ball may just move suddenly up or suddenly down so you will need a bit of bit of training to properly use them and then a remote control so for example your tv remote control that you use or your car if you are you are, if you have a remote control car then you use remote control right it's used to control functions on televisions blu-ray players hi-fi equipment and so on advantages can operate from a reasonable distance you see you can you're sitting on the sofa your tv is on top there's a particular distance between you right so remote control can easily operate within so particular distances uh it's easy to use surface each button you know what to press what to press and where what will happen when you press something disadvantage it's easy to lose the device for example if you're sitting on the sofa then you have your um, remote control right beside you sometimes the remote control enters inside the sofa and then you can easily lose it batteries need to be regularly changed and then the remote infrared signal can be blocked and may not work well if it's not in directly line of sight. You see how you have to point the remote carefully at, properly at the TV before it changes channels or does whatever. So that is um, called the line of sight. It, it has to be directly in front of the TV. Then pointing device such as joystick and driving view. Okay, so they have brought it together. So joystick. So this is what the joystick looks like and then we have a driving view as well Oops. uh which one which one yeah so like the playstation one over here right this is a driving view so advantages they are both used as input devices for gaming or simulators simulators such as flight if you're trying to fly a plane then it's joystick really gives you that experience it mimics actual control advantages more realistic to use on simulations easier and more accurate than a mouse or keyboard to control on-screen movements however movements can be too sensitive oh god sensitive making the input device difficult to use in certain applications now you obviously cannot be using a driving view to um operate control your normal mouse in day-to-day -day life it's it's just not practical it doesn't allow any feedback during a simulation then touch screen oh, come on i mean we all know touch screen but yeah just let me just show it to you in case touch screen so yeah touch screen touch screen self-service till example at a 
petrol station. So for example, in developed countries, when you go to the petrol station, you don't have a man over there that fills it for you and then you do all the payment. You just have a screen over there, you enter how much fuel you want, how much you'll pay, and then it happens. ATMs, the same thing. You have a touch screen, you enter your pin, you enter your money and everything. Uh, public information, chaos, such as at airports, mobile phones and tablets, computer-based training, all have touch screens. Advantages, it's fast data entry and easy to use interface, easy to expand screen like this. For example, I use touch screen to do this. Uh, oops. Yeah. Uh, oops, 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 sorry. Uh, quickly, uh -huh. Easier to keep clean since the surface is glass. Just take a, you have those cleaning thing, cleaning uh, or the cleaning cloth and then just easily clean it. However, limited number of possible choices available. Um, screen can get really dirty quickly and uh, can cause issues at fast food screens. For example, if it's not clean on a regular basis, screens can get scratched. Very important. You see, the problem with touch screens is that they can easily get scratched, causing them to malfunction. Then we have a scanner. Uh, scanner. This is what a scanner looks like. It scans the document and you get a software version of it. Scanning in paper documents and photos to be saved in an electronic format of a computer on a computer. Archiving of valuable old manuscripts. You just scan them and then you get them in the digital format. Used to scan in barcodes at a POS using laser or LED scanners. Advantages, it converts written text into an electronic format, allowing the text to be manipulated by OCR, optical character reader, which we will also look at further in this chapter or I think next next chapters and used in other documents such as, so let's say I have a PDF, I've printed it uh, and then I want to edit it so I can just scan it and then it will use OCR software and put it in text and then I'll have it all put in my word document which i can then um make changes to when used to read backwards the scanner becomes a dde device direct data entry device which we'll look at in this chapter of the second section then um just a second the quality of photos and text depends on the scanner's resolution some can have bad resolution some kind of good resolution so it really depends on the scanner Scanner can be a really slow process. If the barcode being scanned is damaged, the scanner cannot successfully read it and the backup input method is needed. Now, digital camera. We all know cameras as well. So we know most of the uh, devices mentioned here. There are just some of them that we don't really use that often. So we need to know. So these are cameras. Cameras are used for taking photographs or videos, a data capture device, in dentistry to photograph teeth for later dental work, creation of virtual tools around buildings, industrial plants, and so on. You know what you use a digital camera for. So you can take photos compared to a traditional camera. Uh, yes, no need to develop photos. So they are there in your computer, in your camera. You don't have a, how, how do I, wait, uh, have you guys seen those old cameras where once you take a picture, then then you see the picture comes out in those um, films. So you don't need to do that for digital cameras. They will be stored on your camera. Easy to store uh, on another device or in a cloud. So nowadays, most digital cameras, once you take a picture, they are stored to your cloud, which is really helpful because it gives you a lot of storage now. It needs to be a okay the disadvantage needs to a computer literate to use digital camera uh, cameras effectively some artistry is lost since brightness sharpness exposure and all can be altered by software later on such as your let's say snapchat as well once you put on filters you change the artistry you change brightness sharpness you put filters and all that compression of images when being stored can lead to some quality loss okay then microphone uh okay um, I think I'll upload this video in um, parts. So this is 2.1 and I'll do 2.2 and then 2.3. So let's quickly finish this up. Just before that, let me hide great. Give me a second. Okay, great. So we have microphones. Let's quickly see. Microphone. Microphone. Okay, there we go. So yeah. We have these type of microphones, 
in fact the one i'm using is attached to my um headphone so we have those type of microphones and all that we know microphones right so they are used to input speech or sound to be used in presentations special effects music sampling and so on as the sensor detects of the sound intruder alert system detection of liquid dripping from pipes and all that very important used in video conferencing it's used in audio conferencing is used in um, web conferencing as well input device for people with disabilities so they can give a give a uh, give instructions using voice now that voice will be captured using the microphone advantages it's fast input method and useful for people with disabilities allows for possibilities of manipulating sounds in real time can be used in voice activation system uh, can also be used in dialogue based interface as we looked at in the previous chapter uh, disadvantages sound files can be really long like really large like they take up a lot of uh, memory using verbal input can be inaccurate maybe you're using dialogue based interface and you're saying turn on the light but maybe due to some background music the thing has turned off the light so this can be a problem and analog sensors let's look at analog sensors Yeah, so these are what analog sensors look like. Okay, so I think this one here will be good. Now, most of this stuff has to do with Arduino and coding and all that, which detects um, changes in surrounding and all that, which is why we have an analog sen uh, sensor, to be honest. So, uses measure physical data from the environment, send it to a computer. The sensors exist, uh, many sensors exist for, such as temperature, pressure, light, sound, humidity, pH, and many more. The advantages, readings are taken more accurate than manual uh, methods. Readings are continuous. These readings can easily be put on a graph. Possible to take readings in places where people can, humans cannot go due to the danger there. Data gathering is automatic, so it can automatically be sent to a computer. Disadvantages, faulty readings or wrong readings can lead to anomalies or dangerous results. Most sensors are analog, which means, oh, sorry, which means they have to be converted to digital using analog to digital converter, ADC, so that the computer can understand what it's, what the data it's, it has given. Then we move on to light pen. Now, we don't really, not, not this light pen, uh, where is the olden light pen? Yeah, so this is what a light pen is, not a pen that lights up. So selecting objects from a CRT screen, a CRT screen stands for, uh, yeah, cathode ray tube used with CAD or CM software on a CRT screen. Advantages, greater accuracy than touchscreen, very small device, so portable, very easy to input device, very easy input device to use. Now the problems or disadvantage is that it's lag, it lags. So when I move this, it will on using the light pen, it will then take like two or three seconds for it to happen and all that. Currently only works with cathode ray tube screens and it's very outdated technology. Like people barely use it now. We now use stylus, okay? You know, and uh, I think this will all be for this video. It's still a very long video and this is only the first part. So make sure to watch the second and third part. I'll be uploading this right after this. Thank you for, for watching. See you in the next video. So then bye. Ta-da. In fact, I'll record the next parts later. A bit tired now. It's 1.42. Anyways, bye. All right.